Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to make a seashell resin dish. So when I measure my resin, if I have a container that doesn't have measurements on the side, I typically use a scale and I use the Moss Epoxy's uh, website resin calculator to figure out how much resin is needed for this. And you may be able to see I'm using an old McDonald's cup. I have uh, teenage daughters that like to have drinks in them so I like to reuse them a few times if possible so that uh, it doesn't go to waste quite so soon. So before I am pouring them into these little cups for the individual colors, I have stirred the resin for three minutes. Um, you wanna make sure while you're stir stirring it that you really, really scrape the sides and scrape the bottom. You need to make sure those two parts mix really well. And if after the three minutes you see any um, striations or variations in it, if it's not completely crystal clear aside from some of the bubbles, you need to stir it for a little bit longer. So you wanna make sure that it's clear and you don't see the two different parts of it. So once it's completely um, stirred, you're going to put them in different containers for your different colors. I use the Cast and Craft white to do the white part of my resin. When you mix different products into your resin, you want to make sure that whatever you're mixing in there makes up no more than 10% of the resin. Um, otherwise it's not going to set properly. And I'm using Cast and Craft and I'm also using some acrylic paints to color the other colors and they're, um, they've got a lot of color in them so they definitely don't use more than 10%. You can see that I'm pulling the stick out of that white just to make sure that it's covering the color of the stick fairly well. So next I'm using golden paints and I'm using them in black and white. This particular dish is going to be black and white and gray. So I am mixing those colors into my other containers. I use a toothpick to take the um, paint off of the tube so that I'm not accidentally putting it on the stick that I have the resin mixed on. I don't want to have those mixed so by using a toothpick I won't contaminate anything or have resin sticking on my paint tubes or whatnot. Once you have the different colors in the container you're going to mix it really really well. Again you want to make sure that it's no more than 10% of the amount that's in the cup. And this particular one, I'm doing it on a white dish. So you're gonna see if the paint isn't really mixed well with the resin, you're gonna see probably the white dish underneath it. So you wanna make sure that it's sorry, mixed really, really well. I've actually done all of this on the same day as I did my first beach resin tray. So you'll see the amount of resin you or made at the beginning was quite a bit. That's not just for this project. This project took a lot. Um, less of the amount than you saw at the beginning of the video. So I mixed some Pearl X powders in with the colors of gray that I made. I want them to have a little bit of a sparkle to it with the water. So I've used a, I think it was a silver one and a dark one. I'll put it on the, um, the I'll put the supplies used down below so that you can see exactly what colors that I used for this. So I decided that my lighter gray wasn't quite light enough for what I wanted to do with it. So I just added a little bit more white to it and again, mixed it really, really well to make sure that it's completely mixed. And again, anytime I'm mixing different colors or um, micas, I wanna make sure to scrape the sides of my container that I'm using to make sure it's all mixed really, really well and that I don't have any plain clear resin streaks in amongst it. So those are the two grays that I have. Can't see a lot of difference in um, on the camera, but there is a little bit more difference in person. So now I'm putting some uh, playground sand in with, in with some resin to do my shore of my beach. So this is just, or sorry, play box sand. I just got it at Home Depot. I got a big, huge bag, um, which is perfect for this. It's gonna probably last forever. And after that, these are just really tiny rocks that I got in a container at our local Dollarama. I wanted to have a little bit of rocks along the, my fake beach here, so it was perfect. I liked the color Pardon? tone to them. Um, Downstairs? For the different projects that I had oh. in mind for them. 
like as in so sounds like her I'm going to add a little bit more to this container because I have a little bit too much resin to gravel in here. And again, I'm making sure to scrape the sides when I'm mixing it. So the first thing I'm going to pour into my dish is my darker of the two grays. And I try to scrape the sides of the container as much as possible to get as much of it out of the container as possible so that I'm not wasting any, it, any of it. Anything that stays in the container and dries up is obviously going to waste. So we don't wanna do that as much as possible. And also scraping this stir stick that I'm using. And these stir sticks are a silicone stick that I got off of Amazon in a package of different things. So the perfect thing is when they do dry, the resin does dry on it, I can just pick it off um, and pick it clean. So it's something that I can reuse over and over again, which is fantastic. So now I'm pouring the lighter of the two grays in there. And again, scraping the sides as much as possible, getting as much of that excess off as possible. And you can see in the top left corner, my white, there's a ton of it there. I really mixed far too much white when I was uh, preparing to do this, but I ended up using it for a few different projects, so it actually didn't go to waste. But uh, I always am scared to not have enough um, for what I'm doing, so I sometimes do a little bit too much but I usually pour it into extra molds and just do a little bit of experiments with the rest. So I've already put down the sand and now I'm putting down the rock and resin mix that I have along the other edge of the dish opposite of my grays. So before I use my white I do a line of clear. I'm not really sure what why this works but it works much better if you have a break of clear between the color of your water and your white. I've tried to do this without putting that clear line in and my white tends to sink right to the bottom and not really spread very much so this tends to help it spread a little bit over the top of whatever color water you're using or you're creating. So I'm going to do a little line with the white and then I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to blow it. Now typically I will use my heat gun in a really low setting and I'll pop all the bubbles that are in the resin, but because this particular project is so tiny, I didn't even bother to do it. I figured that those bubbles would come out as I was working on them and I could always use my heat gun on a lower setting at any point to pop any that I saw. Now the first amount of white wasn't really enough for what I was going for, so I added a second line. And then I'm going to use my heat gun to blow it out to spread it across the water to create little foamy waves. Now the cool thing about this white is when you first do it, you don't notice a whole lot of cells, but as it sits, they just start to appear and it's actually kind of fun to watch them. So I've bought a bunch of different starfish, different sand dollars, seashells I've collected along the way. Some were off of Amazon, some were from our local dollar store. And I'm just gonna add them to the shoreline. Because this dish is so small, I actually don't put a ton there. Um, I pretty much think that less is more, so I don't try to overcrowd it with too many shells. I mean, people get the idea of what it's supposed to be without having it overloaded. So once that is done, I'm gonna let it sit till the next day and let that layer of resin set. So this way, here we are on the next day, I'm mixing another batch of resin. Again, making sure that it is completely mixed all together. I don't wanna see any lines or striations in it. I wanna make sure that it's really cleared. There will be bubbles in it and that's totally fine. Those bubbles can be um, eliminated after it's been poured by putting it on top of, or by using the heat gun on a low setting to get rid of those bubbles. So I'm putting them in each of the glasses and I'm going to make my different colors. I didn't bother showing it this time because you've already seen it. You don't need to see it a second time. This time I made less resin obviously than I did the day before because I don't need nearly as much as I had the day before. 
So I'm gonna use the same technique as the day before, putting my different colors there. I didn't need um, a batch with some sand or some rock this time because I'm only doing a second um, layer of water and wave. A little bit back from my first layer, it's not gonna cover all the way either. You wanna make sure that um, you see that first layer right at the white foamy part and this is here we're just getting a second layer just to make it a little bit give it a little bit more depth so I used my stir stick there just to kind of mix the two of the grays together a little bit and obviously felt that I needed just a little bit more resin there and again just like before you want to make sure to use as much as it as possible whatever dries in that cup goes to waste so you might as well use it and play with it. After those two grays are poured, just like last time, I'm going to um, put a line of the clear resin and then I'm going to put a line of the white and blow it out with my heat gun. The thing with the clear layer is it sometimes it's a little bit hard to see exactly where it ends. So sometimes the white is a little bit more challenging because you don't see where the clear ends. But it typically gets fixed when you use the heat gun to blow it out. It must have been colder out today because I can see my resin here or on this day that I'm doing this one because I can see my resin is a little bit thicker than it was the day before. So now I'm going to use the heat gun and I'm going to blow those waves out. Sometimes if the resin's a little bit thicker, it takes just a little bit with the heat gun to just warm it up. So you can see when I was blowing it, I got a little bit of resin up, to, up the side of the dish. And that's not something to worry about. You can take a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and you can just wipe it down while it's still liquid and clean it up. Once it's cured, you can't do anything with it, but it's very easy to clean up and tidy up with a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol and like a Q-tip or um, the corner of a sponge or whatever. So I wanted a little bit more of the white there, so I just added a little bit more white. And the nice thing with that white layer and even the black and grays is it's not a one and done. I can add a little bit more as I need to while it's still wet and liquid. So I wanted to add a little bit of the gray here because I wanted to break up that big white spot. So once I'm done now, I'm using my heat gun and I'm going to blow it out a little bit. Now this dish is not meant for food. Um, I know they say resin is non-toxic once it's cured, but it's meant to be just a decoration piece. I gave it to one of my daughters for a little ring dish or whatnot. And that is the finished piece right there. It looks very cute. And as it sat, the, the cells got even bigger. So thank you so much for spending the time with me and watching. I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye.